starting now. This is your local news leader, News 10 ABC at 11. And we begin tonight with some breaking news. The Russian invasion of Ukraine is underway at this hour, according to the White House. It comes as Russian President Vladimir Putin addressed the country on Russian state television, announcing a military operation in Ukraine. News 10 ABC's Lydia Kalbita joining us now with the very latest details. Lydia. Solomon and Trishna, Putin's announcement that he will commence military operations in Ukraine came at the exact same time the United Nations Security Council was holding an emergency meeting in New York City with country after country condemning Russian aggression and calling on Putin to pull back troops. Now instead, Putin warned that there would be consequences never seen for any country that attempted to interfere in Russia's response to what he claimed was Ukrainian aggression. It was just Monday that Putin recognized two areas of eastern Ukraine, you see Donetsk and Luhansk, as independent. Fighting has been going on by Russian-backed rebels in these regions since 2014, when Russia annexed Crimea. More than 13,000 people have been killed, one and a half million displaced in that time, a number that will only grow as explosions have now been reported, not only in those disputed areas, but the city of Kharkiv, north of those areas, in Odessa, across the country, and most distressingly, the explosions have been heard in the capital city of Kyiv tonight. President Biden releasing a statement saying Putin has chosen a premeditated war that will bring a catastrophic loss of life. He also says the world will hold Russia accountable. Biden meeting with G7 counterparts in the morning, then will speak to the American people to announce the further consequences. Now I'm seeing just now that passengers and staff are being evacuated from the Kyiv airport, that is the capital at this time. This is a rapidly developing story and we will keep you updated on air and online overnight. Trishna and Solomon. Lydia, thanks so much for your update. We continue now our breaking news coverage with how people here in the capital region are reacting tonight. News 10 ABC's Connell Smith speaking with a local man with very strong ties to Ukraine. Joining us now with more on the fear and grief, Connell, this community is feeling tonight. Solomon and Tristan, right now behind me in the monitor, we're looking at a live shot of the capital of Kiev. And again, just a few moments ago, I spoke with Dr. Andri Baran, a cardiologist in Saratoga County, who again is of Ukrainian heritage and has friends and family in the Ukraine. He says this is a nightmare come to pass. Never in my life I thought after Ukrainian independence 91 would there be a chance of turning the clock back. And that's what's happening. And it's so frightening on so many levels. It's not just that, uh, you know, uh, Putin is going to overthrow the present government, but they've compiled lists of Ukrainians that are anti-Russians. And the word is that uh, they're going to be either assassinated or sent to camps. Just this weekend, Ukrainian churches across the capital region gathered in prayer to hope that peace can prevail. Reporting in studio, Connell Smith, the News 10, ABC. Thank you, Connell. And of course, for all the latest on this developing situation, keep it tuned right here to News 10 ABC. You can also find the latest updates at News10.com. Okay, back here closer to home. The Albany man accused of beating his grandfather to death, facing upgraded charges this evening. Now, earlier in the evening, Connell Smith filing this report from court with the details on those new charges. Appearing in Colony Town Court Wednesday evening, a 33-year-old Nicholas Pantoni faces a judge to have his charges upgraded. Pantoni now faces a second-degree murder charge in the death of his 82-year-old grandfather. Pantoni was originally charged with first-degree assault after police say he beat Gerald Curran last Friday. Curran passed away the next day. They've charged him, as you know, with uh, killing his grandfather. He denies it, has denied it to me, so... I'm representing him, and he has no intention uh, to taking any kind of a plea. He's made it very clear to me. On February 18th, Colony Police responded to a call in Arcadia Court just after 3 a.m. for a reported fight. Upon arrival, police discovered Pantone's grandfather with serious head injuries and rushed him to Albany Medical Center. Police say Pantone fled the scene before they arrived. He was arrested later Friday afternoon. As news tenants reported, Pantone comes from a family that has a long history of murder and violence. His stepfather is serving 23 years to life in prison after he was found guilty of killing his wife inside their home in 2013. Nicholas Pantoni will appear again in the Colony Town Court for another preliminary hearing next Tuesday, but his attorney believes that the court will waive that hearing and go straight to a grand jury. In Colony, Connell Smith, News 10, ABC.
In continuing coverage tonight, the village of Dollsville is still dealing with flooding from ice jams. The East Canada Creek looking more like a raging river, sending chunks of ice down river, which ended up in people's backyards. Deputy Mayor there says that the flooding has hit more than a dozen homes between Dolge Avenue and Van Buren Street. Many yards along the East Canada Creek are underwater tonight. Neighbors say that today is the third time it has flooded in the past week and more could be on the way. Within the next 45 minutes to an hour, yet another wave of flooding possibly that's going to send more ice down here and, and jam us up again. We want it to keep flowing so that the water subsides from here. People can get their basements pumped out, start replacing furnaces, etc., and they can go back to their houses. The deputy mayor says that the influx of water is coming from Spruce Creek up north. It's overflowing into the East Canada Creek. Some local communities preparing for the snow that's on its way Friday and issuing snow emergencies in advance of it. Cahoes issuing their snow emergency Thursday night at 7 p.m. will end at 7 p.m. on Sunday the 26th. Dalton, Massachusetts over in Berkshire County also issuing a snow emergency from 11 p.m. Thursday night ending at 11 a.m. Saturday morning. Snow emergencies mean that cars need to be parked off the streets so plows can get those roads cleared off. All right, we want to take a quick peek at that storm tracker forecast. Yeah, Cap is going to talk more about that snow, but even tonight, Cap, my goodness, those temperatures drop so quickly. Yeah, it's hard to believe 57 this morning, and now we have wind chills in the teens and single digits. Uh, rather dramatic. Cold air is pouring in, setting the stage for the next storm. Winter storm watch in effect, basically tomorrow night into most of Friday. It covers a huge chunk of real estate all the way down into uh, Pennsylvania and northern New Jersey. Now, I've had a, quite a while to look at some of the new data coming in. Two things I'm looking at. Number one, timing hasn't changed. Number two, a little bit colder. So a little colder scenario would mean a little bit more snow and maybe less ice based on the data coming in right now. It arrives midnight to 2 a.m. early Friday morning. For the morning commute, heavy snow, three to six inches on the ground. A brief period of mixing is possible around Albany, but then it would go back to snow. A little better chance of some mixing to the south between 8 and noon, and it should taper off by 4 or 5 o'clock, which means the roads could still be in tough shape for the afternoon commute. Down to 24 in Albany, 21 Manchester, Hudson at 26, and again, we have a wind not quite as strong as it was earlier, but it's still gusty. Little bit of light flurries and snow showers over the uh, Helderberg Escarpment back into a Schoharie County. This is lake induced, a coating maybe a quarter or a half an inch, but they're shifting south and uh, weakening, a little lake effect for us. Now this moisture here, it looks like it's pretty close, but that's going to stay south of us tomorrow. That's not part of the main event late tomorrow night. Lows tonight, mid to upper teens locally as you head up towards the town of Day closer to 10. Don't go away much more on this snowstorm. Could be our biggest of the season in Albany. Solomon. All right, thanks, Cap. Happening right now, the Cambridge School District voting tonight to take on New York State defending its mascot. It's been a topic of debate since 2019 after petitioners asked the school to retire the Native American imagery. Well, last year, the state intervened and ordered schools across New York with native mascots to drop the imagery by July of this year. But tonight, board members approving a resolution to appeal that state order by a 3-2 to two vote. The issue will now head to the courts. Meanwhile, we're learning new details about a missing woman from White Creek who has ties to the Cambridge School District. Morgan Bates is a 2019 graduate of Cambridge High School. She was possibly last seen in Petersburg in Runcer County. She has black hair and four piercings on her bottom lip at tonight's Cambridge School meeting officials praying that she's found safe. I think the sheriff's offices for Washington and Runcer County are working hard to try to find her. She's been missing since um, early morning on the 22nd. So I just wanted to um, kind of say that the Bates family is in our prayers and I hope uh, she gets brought home safe. Anyone with information on where Bates may be is asked to contact law enforcement. 
A string of robberies in Saratoga Springs seemingly coming to an end as one man has been arrested in connection to that string of crimes. 37 year old Justin Rock of Balston Spa accused of robbing four different businesses in Saratoga Springs. He's accused of robbing a pizza shop, a smoke shop, an extra mart and a liquor store all between Saturday night and Monday afternoon. He was arrested last night, now accused of taking money from each of those businesses. He pleaded not guilty to four counts of robbery in Saratoga City Court this morning. I'm super excited that they got him. Um, it's sad that something like that has happened around here. People at each of the stores that did get robbed say everybody thankfully is okay, but as you just heard there, some of them understandably still shaken up. Well, a lot of people remember getting their first COVID shot and obviously the relief that probably came with it too. Coming up, we will introduce you to two brothers who vividly remember getting another shot. It was in the 50s when polio was paralyzing kids. We'll look back on the rollout in tonight's special report. You're looking for local news 10 ABC in the morning has what you want. The latest local breaking news, the most captivating local stories and the best local weather from your storm tracker team. News 10 ABC in the morning, your local news leader. On the front lines of the pandemic, this is what SUNY public teaching hospitals look like. And this is what SUNY's hospital budget looks like, down $1 billion. To continue providing quality care to New Yorkers and training the next generation of nurses, doctors, and healthcare professionals, Albany needs to step up and fully fund SUNY so our hospitals can keep serving communities that need it most. Tell Albany to fully fund SUNY hospitals because we can't afford to see what happens if they don't. At Feral Gas, we make propane easy with great service, quick delivery options, reliable propane supply, and online account tools that customers love. Feral Gas, fuel life simply. You don't have to go out of your way for us to please you. At Denoyer Chevrolet, it's what we do. Denoyer Chevrolet, reimagined. 1,900 miles of a divide between two countries. I've been living in this county for almost 40 years. I've never seen it like this. Only on News Nation. For the people crossing, it just doesn't stop. Thank you. Showing you the untold stories at the border crossings giving a voice to Americans living in a time of turmoil. Join us for our exclusive border report right here. The impactful stories at the border. Border report, communities in crisis. All this week on Morning in America. You don't have to go out of your way for us to please you. At Denoyer Chevrolet, it's what we do. Denoyer Chevrolet, reimagined. The most accurate forecast when you need it. News 10 ABC, your local weather leader. I know this may look like a classic rooftop chasing. But it's an Esau salesman ad. Right on cue. This rogue's got more power than that CRV. Might want to hold on. Get 0% APR financing for 36 months on Altima. The action never ends, but these offers will. Sports director Liana Bonavita, only on News 10 ABC. Get your hour by hour weather forecast. Mornings on News 10 ABC. You're watching News 10 ABC, your local news leader. If history teaches us anything about contagious diseases, it may be that life does get back to normal. May take some time, though. From polio to COVID, tonight two local brothers remembering the Capital Region's response in the midst of another major vaccine rollout. Much like COVID, polio was dramatic, but it mostly affected kids. The year was 1955. When a gallon of gas cost 29 cents, people were walking around the clock, and nine-year-old Marty Strasberg was in class at School 16 in Troy. I was in third grade. 
a year he remembers. 30 kids from the class went out in the hallway. With a dose of nostalgia. No lollipops, <laughs> big needles. As polio paralyzed kids. There were a doctor and a nurse giving out the inoculations. A new vaccine had emerged. Before you knew it, it was over. We went back to class. In Schenectady, the virus was so widespread. This is outside of Sunnyview. Back then, Sunnyview treated mostly children. It was a horrific disease because it impacted kids. By the time it made it into Marty's arm, it was injecting hope into the community. The church bells were ringing. People were lining up to get this. J Street was jam-packed, and schools were central in the effort. This was a very labor-intensive thing to, to, to give all these kids the shot in the same day. Had lots of volunteers. Marty's older brother, Jim, scoured every local article from the 50s, looking at the parallels of polio. Every edition had an article every day there was something about polio. Including April 13th, 1955 when the vaccine arrived in Albany. That was flown up at nighttime by Colonial Airlines, which is no longer in existence, and was met by a police car at the Albany airport, and was taken to, the vaccine was taken to General Electric. And you know why it was taken to General Electric? They put it in the cafeteria in the coolers to keep it cool overnight. One article in particular. Dr. Irving Strasberg has a personal attachment. This is for my father giving the polio vaccinations. Not everyone was always happy about it. Yeah, there were definitely bumps in the road. A professor of epidemiology, Dr. Gus Burkhead, walks us through what didn't stick. Most notably, a botched batch of the vaccine resulting in 10 deaths. Really, the vaccine program picked right up and kept on going. I think if it had happened today, you can only imagine what would have happened. Despite the setback, by the 60s, cases of polio plummeted. One of the differences is that this vaccine was not developed with government money or by the pharmaceutical industry. It was developed by a small foundation. You know them now as the March of Dimes. Half the money that Schenectady raised in the March of Dimes went to research and half went to pay the hospital bills. Jim, who became a doctor himself, chronicled the contagion. I thought my mother was the only one who would have wanted to read it, but... Uh, <laughs> With his brother's help, their retrospective research recorded in these pages. I learned a couple things. The most important thing was how important individuals were and how leadership was. At 74, Marty, now the prime target of a different disease. COVID came on the scene in March of 2020. I mean, I was scared to death. <laughs> A new memory sticking with him. Do you remember getting your COVID vaccine? That was a very big day. Really felt like uh, th this was a momentous date. We were, we could turn the corner. Turning another page on history. And I'm sure years from now, so many people will remember getting their first COVID shot as well. Now, it would be 10 years after the polio shot was first rolled out that in 1965, New York State made it a requirement for children to be vaccinated against polio so that they could attend public schools. Then by the 60s, there were fewer than 100 polio cases in the entire country, but really just illustrates it wasn't overnight. It, it took years and years for this rollout to be effective. It took a while, but just so amazing. So many of the similarities, mm -hmm. but also the differences in how these were rolled out. Exactly. Learned a lot there. Yeah. I'm sure you did. And so did we. Right, Cap? Yeah. Great story. It's great to see a different perspective of, a, of an earlier time. I remember lining up at the nurse's office. That's how old I am. Did you get a lollipop? Um, no, I was crying. <laughs> and I just wanted to get it over with. <laughs> That's what my mom tells me. <laughs> Stephen, you're a chicken. <laughs> she, she was right. <laughs> 57, the high today in Albany was this morning. Then we dropped, but I, what I really want to point out on this map is how warm it was. It was almost near 70 in Boston and Providence, 69, both record highs, and as close by as Hartford, Connecticut, right here, 71 this afternoon, and look at Newburgh, had a high temp of 70. That's how warm it was so close. We weren't too shabby, not quite as warm as what they had, now the reality check, right? Down to 9 at Indian Lake, 21 Queensbury, 20 at Manchester, 18 in uh, Johnstown. Cold air pouring in before the next storm. 22 in Voorheesville, 18 Dwaynesburg, Coble Skill at 16. Clobber, Ghent, Chatham, and Columbia County, all 24. 21 at Pittsfield to 26 right now at North Adams. So the much colder air came in. 
There's that strong cold front. There is an area of a little bit of light snow, sleet, and rain moving across uh, the Ohio Valley, but this is going to get pushed south of us. We'll have some high clouds from that, but that should be about it. Now, this is what we're watching. Tremendous amount of energy is coming out of the Rocky Mountains, diving down into Texas tonight. That's going to capture that storm that's near Louisiana, kind of just milling around here, and start to work its way northeastward and pick up quite a bit in the way of uh, moisture. Big contrast of temperature with this. Whenever you have that, you, you can usually have a pretty decent storm. So tomorrow night at 3 a.m., the storm will be heading up towards Pittsburgh. We should have some light to moderate snow here. First thing in the morning, Friday, moderate to heavy snow as the storm tracks west of us and tries to redevelop on the coast. It's this redevelopment that will trap the cold air. And if we didn't have this, we'd have sleet, all sleet. But this storm is going to keep enough cold air in to keep it mostly snow. Albany North, especially north of Albany, all snow. Looks like some mixing here. Snow and a little bit more of an icy mix as you head down south of Hudson. A general area of 8 to 12 inches. I'm not changing my thinking from last night. As you go south with a bit more sleet, decent snow, but a little bit less at 4 to 8 inches. Highs tomorrow close to 30. Cold air, right? And when it's snowing on Friday, high temperatures will be in the mid to upper 20. So there's not going to be much, if any, melting during the day. 18 tonight, the wind's dropping off. Still some lingering flurries in the hill towns. For tomorrow, a mix of clouds and sunshine, a colder day, not much wind, 31. Snow later Thursday night, snow Friday, a little bit of mixing south of Albany, 27. Partly sunny, 27 on Saturday. Sunday, watch for an afternoon snow shower or squall, 36. Cold on Monday, 20. March 1st, mostly cloudy, 33. And on Wednesday, quiet and 32. Trishna? All right, thanks so much, Cap. A Glens Falls Staples serving it up one last time. Their message to the community after almost 70 years and when you can get your final meal. Your career at Curtis Lumber. Apply today at curtislumber.com. I'm much more excited about this than a 54-year-old person should be. I like it. It's never too late to stay up with Kimmel. I like your style. Maybe I'll come back in five years. I, 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 New weeknights on ABC and stream on Hulu. She recently learned she has cancer, but she also has St. Peter's Health Partners, which means she has connections the area's most comprehensive oncology care. Diagnostic imaging, surgery, targeted therapy, mental health and spiritual support, working as a team, plus a care coordinator to guide her through it all so that she can get back to the life she loves. That's why so many people choose St. Peter's Health Partners. Connected care is better care. It's a place of care and friendship, a place of laughter and memories, a place where seniors live their best lives. It's not a home, it's your home. Letters Country Homes. Call to learn more. Step into the new when you drive a Chevy. It's time for a fresh approach and a new perspective. Meet new friends or reconnect with some old ones and find the Chevy that's right for you. Find new experiences, find new roads. Drive yours away this President's Day. Very well qualified buyers can get 0% financing on most Chevy vehicles. Plus, on select models, current competitive owners get an additional $750 bonus cash. See your upstate Chevy dealers. Hello, I'm Dr. Mary Bassett. If you've been waiting to get a COVID vaccine or you're eligible for a booster, don't wait. COVID infections can happen in vaccinated people. But the risk of severe illness, hospitalization, even death, is much higher for people who are not vaccinated. Get vaccinated and boosted, wear a mask, and if you're sick, get tested and stay home. Learn more at ny.gov vaccines. 
think premium can't be capable? Think again. Introducing the first ever AT4 lineup. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. Step up to GMC with 0% financing on these GMC models. We are professional grade GMC. We're a different kind of dentistry. One who believes in doing anything it takes to make dentistry work for your life. So we offer a complete exam and x-rays free to new patients without insurance every day. Plus patients get 20% off their treatment plan. We're on your corner and in your corner every step of the way. Because your anything is our everything. Aspen Dental. Anything to make you smile. Book today at AspenDental.com. Walk in or call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL. Watching News 10 ABC, your local news leader. Last call at one Glens Falls Diner will happen on Friday, nearly 70 years after they open their doors. Sam's Diner on Dix Avenue posting this message to Facebook this morning, thanking everyone for their business over the years. They say that they will continue the legacy of Peter Brock, the former owner of Sam's Diner, in other ways. Their last day of business will be Friday from 730 in the morning till 1:30. Oh, this is the food block I'm here for it. When a Lansingburg ice cream staple reopens for the season here in a few weeks, going to be under new ownership. Snowman ice cream owner John Murphy selling the business to Daily Hospitality Group, which owns Old Daily Catering and Daily's on Crooked Lake. And this upcoming season will be the 69th year that the snowman is open. New owners say customers will not see many changes. They do want to preserve what has worked so well for nearly seven decades. Listen, we're planning to do exactly what's been done for the last 72, three years, whatever it is. Uh, we're not looking to make any changes. John is coming on with us to help us, uh, you know, do exactly what he did. And opening day for the Snowman Ice Cream Store is March 12th. And we'll continue with the Good Eats happening next week. The city of Waterville is hosting its second annual restaurant week. It'll take place from Sunday, February 27th till Saturday, March 5th. Local restaurants participating will have specialty dishes for $20.22. The city says that last year's restaurant week was very successful and they're excited to do it all over again. All right, from food to sports, let's send it over to News 10 ABC Sports Director Liana Bonavita for what's coming up in sports. Hey, Liana. My two favorite things, food <laughs> and sports. You Albany men's and women's basketball both playing meaningful games late in the season. We'll have highlights and reaction from both games coming your way next. Closed captioning is sponsored by Albany Med. Always at our best when you need us most. At DePaula, we think of our customers as family, so we want your experience here to be fair and easy. This week, you can drive any DePaula Chevy with zero down payment, zero first payment, and zero security. So come join the family and think DePaula for all your automotive needs. Journey in Concerts. Freedom Tour 2022. March 8th at MVP Arena. Journey with very special guest, Toto. Tickets on sale now at journeymusic.com. Don't miss Journey Live. Produced by AEG Presents. It's your guardian angel. It's your muse. It's your smart dress, tech and tent, safety obsessed superhero. The Hyundai Sonata and Elantra. Hey, it's your journey. Own it. Lease a 2022 Elantra for $169 a month or Sonata for $189 a month. Hurry in. This is where I grew up. My dad tended bar. My mom worked at the sewing factory. Great communities like this have been hurt badly by decades of higher taxes and mismanagement. I've spent my life fixing problems and turning things around, and I can turn around New York. I'll end bloated budgets, repeal the Cuomo-Hocal tax hikes, and keep going. It won't be easy. The politicians want business as usual, but they've never met someone like me before willing to stop their paychecks if they fail to act. 
for my family and yours, we will turn around New York. Valentine's Day is in February. At Auto Cadillac, we call it the month for lovers. We are here to play matchmaker and introduce you to a Cadillac you'll love because we love to see you completely satisfied. We're all American, all luxury, all auto. Visit RV1 Albany at the Mega RV Show from February 25th to March 6th at the Wilton Mall. Enjoy special show pricing on all your favorite brands like Jayco, Winnebago, Rockwood, and more. Plus, every purchase comes with an RV Complete VIP membership and a price lock guarantee on all show orders. Looking to trade? Take advantage of up to 120% of trade value. Don't miss out on special show pricing. Join us at the Mega RV Show or online at RV1.com. At Ford, we know all about leadership, building for the future, building for the people. And now, the Ford President's Day sales event is delivering great offers to all. From F-Series, the best-selling trucks for 45 years, to SUVs rated number one in brand loyalty. It's President's Day, America. Time to build your own legacy. Custom build your new Ford trucker SUV and get an extra $1,000 bonus cash. View special lease and financing deals at buyfordnow.com. At Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries, we know everyone has their favorite spot. It's the President's Day Sale. Save on recliners from $4.99, plus 0% interest for 36 months. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably. At DePaula, we think of our customers as family, so we want your experience here to be fair and easy. This week, you can drive any DePaula Chevy with zero down payment, zero first payment, and zero security. So come join the family and think DePaula for all your automotive needs. And now, your News 10 ABC Sports. Welcome back, everyone. You Albany men's basketball entered the night in a three-way tie for the two seed in the America East Tournament. That's, of course, if the season ended today. That's not the case, though. Three games left in the regular season. The Great Danes know the significance of each and every one of them. Starting tonight at Maine, the Black Bears beat the Danes by double digits in their first meeting. They shot nearly 60% from three then. They were held to just 28% tonight, but Max Klansjack knocks that one down. Maine up double digits, adding on Fofo out of Togan. Throwing down the alley -oop. Black Bears built a 16-point lead. Great Danes chipping away. Nymir Little to Justin Neely for the dunk. UA down seven at the break. Jamel Horton takes over the rally train early in the second half. The floater's good. He finished with 14 points. Danes within five, part of an 11-0 run. Two-point game now. Under four to play. Matt Saruti, top of the key. Money. He had a game-high 18, including four of five from long range. Make that a four-point play. You all, but he hits their free throws down the stretch to win 72-68. So what was the message at halftime that turned it all around? I was excited um, to be in that kind of environment in this kind of game because it was going to show the growth of our program. I thought our culture was in full display. We believed, um, you know, our coaching staff and myself, we challenged our guys. We had to play better. We needed to be tougher. We needed to do things um, – and to execute better and pay attention to details, and our guys did it. And in doing so, the Danes maintain a tie for second place in the conference. The U Albany women put their perfect 13-0 home record on the line tonight against league-leading Maine, a team that's won nine straight on the road. Danes down six late in the first, Lucia de Cortez. And one, she scored a career-high 18 points. UA would pull within two until Paula Gallego hits the three here. Maine came right back and hit another to make it 21-13 at the half. Third quarter, Hellion Hagerstrand, tough take. Makes it a six-point game, but the Black Bears answer. Ann Simon with a couple of her team high 13. That one's just too easy. Pushes the lead back out to double digits with eight minutes left. Maine would hold on to win 49-45 to clinch the top seed in the America East Tournament. Black Bears won the turnover battle 22-14. Those turnovers killed us, and um, you know our lack of offensive execution really, really struggled. So back to the drawing board, and, and we got to really learn from this and, and be ready to face a really tough team in Stony Brook on Saturday. Stony Brook's ineligible for the tournament, but a win would help the Danes in a tiebreaker for the two seed. A really good team would see its season end tonight. The Section 2 Class B quarterfinals pitting a pair of top 20 ranked teams against one another. Catskill, the three seed against Fonda, the six. Cats down double digits. Janae Brantley with the Harden-esque step back three. That's pretty. Fonda still in control though. Up eight. Braves breaking the press. Kyla Smith in the corner. Knocks down a triple. Fonda pulls off the upset 68-47. Top seeded Shalmont now taking on Tamarack. Sabres flipping a switch down 7-4. Their pressure really got to Tamarack. Off the steal, Peyton Graber 
right to the rack, part of a 13-0 run, and there was no answer for Carissa Antoine down low. She had 20. Shalmont rolls 66-35. You can find Scotia's first round win online as well as the Thunder highlights. Adirondack topping Newfoundland for the second straight night behind a hat trick from Shane Harper. All right, thanks, Liana Cat. Go Thunder! <laughs> um, be ready tomorrow night, Friday, a significant snowstorm from much of New York and New England. All right, thanks so much for joining us. Jimmy Kimmel up next. Have a good night.